Welcome to the What You Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori Ami, will interview published authors to chat about their work, journey to getting published, and their book recommendations. If you share a passion for books and always looking for your next read, then join us. Hi, Mary Kay. Welcome to the What You Next podcast. Thank you. Great to be here. So happy to have you here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, let's see. I uh, grew up in St. Pete, Florida. I'm a recovering journalist. This uh, Hello Summer is my 27th novel, I think. Um, I write beach books. I'm married to my uh, starter husband of 43 years. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So I'm kind of boring. No, you're not. I think I like I like to write beach books. I love you. have been married a long time. And I love that you call him a starter husband. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so what inspired you to become a writer? And you know, I was reading before I was in even started first grade. I'd always been a big reader. And I think I come from a family of storytellers. I'm the first published author in the family, but all the, especially all the women in my family on my mother's side uh, were storytellers. And um, I think, and on my father's side, I'm Irish and, you know, the Irish are storytellers. So I think it was inescapable for me. I love it. And so you were a journalist. And so how does your journalism experience um, impact the writing? It, in so many ways, it's hard to list. For one thing, it helps me structure my story because, you know, in a newspaper story, there, there is a, um, there's a definite architecture to a newspaper story, beginning, middle, and end, and that helps. Uh, with story structure, um, same thing, um, intro, body of the story, and then conclusion. So, um, mm-hmm. and then I think also it helps me um, understand that writing is my job. Um, I can't wait for the muse. So um, I'm always on a deadline. And when I was a reporter, I was always on a deadline. Now, my deadlines now have, are longer range, but mm-hmm. the closer I get to deadline, the harder and faster I write. Yeah, so what does your day look like? Do you write every day or do you write seven days of the week? Um, No, not every day and not seven days a week. Right now, we are two weeks out from the launch of the pub day of Hello Summer. So I'm doing a ton of prep stuff. I'm doing a lot of um, social media. Um, There's just a lot of stuff to do. Uh, I have started um, next summer's book, but uh, especially with the pandemic, uh, right now, um, I'm so stressed and anxious. I really have a very short attention span, so I haven't been writing a lot of fiction, unfortunately. When I when I am writing, um, I stri- I strive for 2,000 words a day. That's a good chunk of work for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I start out writing longhand in a one of those um, school composition books, oh. and then yeah, then I revise as I go and type into my computer. I love it. <laughs> That's an interesting process, you know, just getting it out of your head and then typing it in and just seeing the story shape itself out. Yeah, I think writing longhand for me, I'm a very fast typist because, as I say, I was a daily newspaper reporter. So uh, writing longhand slows my mind down and lets me, the physical act of moving my pen across paper sometimes is really helpful for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. So you had 27 books to publish. Do you remember what was your journey to get that first book published or or those first books? Yeah. Books? You know, the, the first book didn't get published. I was working as a reporter at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. I had two young kids and newspapers were not going in the direction I was happy with. And I decided I would try to uh, sell a book and tumble my way out of newspapers. So... Um, uh, for about a year, year and a half, starting in around 1989, I um, started working in secret on a novel, mm-hmm. and I gave myself a deadline. Um, and at the end of the year, I hadn't finished. So I took two weeks unpaid leave from the paper and um, finished, and then started sending out query letters and looking for an agent. Um, all the usual things that you do when you're trying to get published. And the first book never did get published, but the second book, which turned out to be Every Crooked Nanny, did get published. Hmm. And so why choose the genre? Like you're you're writing fiction, you know, as opposed to nonfiction. Why choose fiction as your genre? Yeah. I 
I think it was a natural progression for me. I was ready to stretch my wings with storytelling. I wanted um, the first book, uh, the first book I sold, I wrote in first person. Of course, you don't get to do that in in um, journalism. Usually you're writing in third person. You have to be very um, objective. And I didn't want to do any of those things. Oh. I wanted to be subjective and write first person. And I wanted to use bad words. <laughs> so, um, and I, you know, I, and I actually had an idea to write a nonfiction novel, but it, it never turned into anything. That's all right. Well, I love your fiction novels, <laughs> and I love that you had a long journey. And so, let's talk about your writing. Do you follow an outline, or are you a plotter, or are you a pantser? I'm a plotter. I would say I start with a synopsis, and it tells me the story of the story. I know who the protagonist is. I try to know what her issues are. Um, and then I start the beginning. And um, I only have a, I have a vague notion of where I'm going. And I write straight through all the way to the end. And I don't do a lot of different drafts. Um, I revise as I go. So for me, there's not, there isn't any of this third, gra- third draft, fourth draft, none of that. It's I just start and then I rip through to the begin to the end. Mm, I love it. Um, so how do you organize yourself as a writer? How do you keep track of your ideas, inspirations, or characters? Um, I try to only have one book in my head at a time. Okay. I have chaos brain. So I am not one of these people who can work on two or three different projects at the same time. I have my little um, composition books and I might have a folder with uh, some ideas in it, but w- really I start at the beginning and write to the way all the way to the end. And I'm along the way, maybe I'm making notes about, I need a, I need a character and I'm looking for a name or, you know, I might, um, I might go online and look for photographs mm. um, for inspiration for the setting of a novel, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, do you share your work along the way? Do you wait to complete a father's story? Nobody is reading my book except, well, my editor and my agent are reading over my shoulder. Okay. And that's because I want them to. Yeah, I want them to. Um, I need instant gratification. I love it. <laughs> um, so let's talk about Hello Summer. Um, this book is set in a small beach town and is a family affair set in a town newspaper. So I get a hint that you are a journalist. So was that a source of inspiration for this book? Yeah, I had been wanting to write a story set in a newspaper for a while. And my editor kept saying, well, you know, newspapers are, um, you know, it's a dying industry. Nobody wants to read that. And I I finally said, look, that's what makes it so interesting. It gives it, you know, you, you've got to have, um, you've got to have something that's going wrong in a book and there's a lot going wrong um, and tough times for newspapers right now. So um, this year seemed to be the year. And finally my editor said, yeah, okay. Yeah. This is the year. Let's, let's do it. (laughs) And so, um, you know, my story starts in the last newsroom I worked in at the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Yeah. Um, and then it switches immediately to a very small, struggling weekly paper in the um, Panhandle, Florida beach town of Silver Bay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, did you do some research about, like, because journalism has changed? We have digital digital media and all those different things are innovations are happening. Did you, how much research did you conduct to get that part right? Yeah, I had to do quite a bit of a research because it's changed. I've been out of the business for um, almost 30 years. I left newspapers in 1991. Um, so I'm coming up on my 29th anniversary. So I, um, I, I have friends who li- who uh, own and run a small town weekly newspaper in Georgia and I went and hung out with them and talked about the challenges that they're facing with the business. Um, I went back to the Journal Constitution newsroom because, as I say, I hadn't been in a newsroom in such a long time. And things had changed so much I hardly recognized it. Um, and I did a lot of online research. I have a friend who um, just retired from journalism. He helped me a lot. So um, I do a lot of I always do a lot of first person research for the books. Mm, I love it. It does show because it was something interesting. I knew that newspapers are a dying industry and knew like what was going on, but I didn't realize like the innovation about digital media and how much 
social media and all the different things have helped newspapers need to sustain right now. Um, right. Wow. It's awesome. Let's talk about Conley. Conley comes back to town after losing her job. She's looking for a way out of, she's looking for a way out, but her grandmother wants her to say, why was it important to share her journey throughout the story? Um, I mean, uh, she has to have a journey or else you just have a static story. If she, yeah. if she, if you start the story at the beginning and she ends up happy, well, you don't have much of a journey and you don't have, <laughs> there's a whole lot of books to fill. Yeah. Um, she had to, she had to change over the course of the book and mm-hmm. she had to change her attitude towards, um, her hometown, um, towards working in the family business, um, and she had to come face to face with some demons that she had managed that she'd been running from for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, let's talk about Rowena, which is an interesting character. She's like the town know it all. Um, one of the journalists, but we don't know. If she's like the right journalist. Um, what inspired you to add this character to the story? Well, I'll tell you, when I worked at the Atlanta Constitution, there was a longtime columnist there, and she um, was a legend. She actually had covered the premiere uh, in Atlanta of Gone with the Wind. Oh, my gosh. So she was pretty elderly. Yeah, she was pretty elderly by the time I met her, and she shared a lot in common with Rowena. She, um, She wasn't great at getting her facts straight or spelling people's names right, but she, she knew everybody and everything going on in Atlanta. And so she had a lot of, um, she had a lot of pull, a lot of social pull and she didn't mind using it. And my favorite thing about her was when I met her, um, I, I had a little, my, my now grown daughter was a year old and I was showing somebody a picture of my daughter and she said, Oh, here's my baby. And she picked, she, she pulled out a picture of her dog. (laughs) <laughs> who, whose name was Fluffy, I think, and um, a little fluffy white purse puppy. And so um, I, I guess I must have known all along that I would use um, her as an inspiration for Rowena. I love it. I love they have real life inspiration. I and, mean, you know, most towns have that character. So it just like, it's oh, like, yeah. you know, it's something to be think about when you think about a small town. Like you may have that quirky character who, who thinks one way, but isn't, who's connected, well connected with the community. And, yeah. it, you know, looks for ways. And, you yeah, know, where all the bodies are buried. Yeah. So, um, so in this in this story, we have the boy next door at the moment. Um, Skelly Sean um, was the perfect sidekick for Conley. Why was Skelly was the right match for Conley? Well, I wasn't sure he was at first, but I think um, as I found out more about him and I found out more about Conley, um, Conley needed somebody who um, who understood her past and and had dealt with it and had, who had gone through things himself mm-hmm. um and she needed someone she needed somebody who was kind and um understood her and loved her for who she was and um but he gave her you know he gave her the room to come around to him he didn't he didn't push her mm-hmm. um but he just waited her and that's what i loved about skelly that he he was that kind of he was that kind of guy yeah, he was like the perfect like voice of reason needs, you know, I'm supporting you unconditionally. I'm letting you just grow and like surrendering the process. Mm-hmm. Like he just let yeah. her go and he was like, if she's meant to be, she'll come back to me. And that felt like right, yeah. healthier. Um, so the story dives into investigative journalism that's full of twists and turns that keeps the reader engaged with the story. What inspired you to have the senator storyline, the senator's death, and then the family, and all the all the political affair that happened? Well, um, that is inspired by real life. It's one of those rip from the headlines kinds of things. I was reading my hometown paper a few years ago, and an actually an old friend of mine who is who was at the time a reporter for that paper had written a story about the um, town's longtime congressman who had died of natural causes, but at his funeral, one of his sons stood up and um, mentioned that, um, you know, he knew that everybody was mourning his dad, but, and not just he and his mother and siblings, but his father's 
first secret family. Mm. And of course, yeah, heads in the church kind of spun around. And it turns out that um, the congressman had been married for 35 years to his first wife and had three or four grown children. And then when he was in his early 50s, he um, fell in love with a secretary in his congressional office in D.C. And um, she got pregnant and he divorced his first wife um, and kind of left the the first family behind in the shadows. They, they weren't part of, they weren't mentioned in his official obituary. They weren't mentioned in his official congressional biography. So, um, and so many of, so many people who thought they'd known him for a long time, we didn't know any of this. So, um, when I read that story, I thought, aha, and I sort of filed it away. And, and, uh, so it came out to play with Hello Summer. I love it. Yeah. It was like the perfect intrigue, twists and turns, family drama, perfect journalism, you know, story. You just want to keep reading more and more. So I loved, I loved the twist. It's about that, that, you know, running for the congressman's seat and all those different things that happen um, as a result of this, the secret. Yeah. I mean, um, what I wanted was for Comley to, when she moves home, she immediately, and she starts working for the paper. They want her to do the the nice thing, the quiet thing. And she can't do that because she is who she is. And as soon as that story starts to unfold, she, you know, she comes across um, a wreck, a one car wreck on a lonely country road late at night, three in the morning. And uh, it turns out to be the congressman from this town and she can't let it go. She can't, you know, her, everyone is saying, just leave it alone. It's, you know, it's a terrible tragedy. The family's mourning. But she knows there's a story there. And so she just keeps um, picking up rocks, as she says. Yes. And it was a great story. And it helped her stay in the town, which is which is what, you know, at the end of the day, that was what her grandmother was looking for. Yeah. Um, so what book are you working next? I am working slowly. I've started next summer's book. And it is about... Um, a young woman who arrives um, seemingly from nowhere at, at a little family mom and pop motel um, on the Florida Gulf Coast again. Mm-hmm. And she has a little uh, three or four year old girl with her and the girl is not her child. Mm. Um, and so she, she's running from something and from something. And, um, and so that's what the book is going to, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of old secrets and this is a sister story and um so, uh, hello summer is a sister story it's the first one i've written and it's which is weird because i have two sisters or i had two sisters yeah that's awesome i can't wait to read it <laughs> so awesome so now let's go to a round of book recommendations this is an opportunity for you to share with the audience what they should read next what is your favorite genre Probably women's fiction, what I write. I love historic fiction um, and, and, women, and women's fiction. So, um, and I like a little mystery, you know, um, stirred in. Yeah. So who's your favorite author? Uh, going way back, I would, well, not so way back, Eleanor Lippman, who writes these wonderful uh, kind of literary women's novels. They're always funny. They're always about family matters and forgiveness and quirky characters. And um, she's a, a writer who I really admire. I love it. Where do you talk through favorite books of all time? Well, Rebecca by Daphne Du Maurier is probably one of the, one of the books that I read as a teenager, which probably had a big uh, impact on my wanting to be a writer, wanting to tell a story. Um, like the moody, suspenseful story that's in Rebecca. And then um, a few years ago, um, again, well, Eleanor Littman, the first book of I read of hers, which was called The Family Man. I love that book so much. I think to me it's the perfect book. It's short. It's sweet. It's tender. It's funny. It's touching. It, it, it kind of um, it's all the cylinders for me. And then a book from a couple of years ago, not more than a couple of years ago, Where'd You Go, Bernadette by uh, mm. Maria Semple. I love that book. 
I love your book too. That was a great book. And um, what book have you read this year that you love? Um, one of my, I guess my favorite book from last year was Evie Drake Starts Over by Linda Holmes. So good. Um, I, you know, it's, it's a romance. It's, it's wittily told. Um, Evie is a character that you can relate to and, uh, doesn't hurt that, um, there's a, there, there's a baseball story there. And I'm the only sport sport I really understand or follow is baseball. Cause my husband and my son, uh, we're baseball players. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Fun fact. Um, so tell us where you can find you online. You can find me at Mary Kay Andrews. And I have my website is MaryKayAndrews.com. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter as MK Andrews, M-K-A-Y Andrews. And on Instagram where I post pictures of whatever I'm working on my dog, my grandchildren, whatever junk I'm buying and whatever I'm cooking. I love it. Thank you, Mary Kay, for being on the show. Thanks for having me. It was great to be with you. If you enjoy this podcast, feel free to share with friends and share a review on iTunes. This is the best way to support the show. Once you join the Romans Loving Community, make new friends, and get book recommendations, join our Patreon Romans Book Club. For $5 a month, you'll be part of a virtual book club, an Instagram chat, and get monthly book recommendations. Please note I'll be donating 10% of the profit to a COVID-19 relief fund each month. To sign up, just join the link in the show notes. What Tree Next Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you love on frolic.media slash podcasts. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back in a few days with a brand new episode. Have a great day.